Well, hello there. This is Carrie at Wooing Nature, and this is the reading for all of my Aries people out there. Hello, Aries, and welcome to January. I'm so glad that we're here. I'm glad to be able to bring you this reading and to spend this time with you and um, give you some insight and see what happens for 2021 because 2020 was what it was. Whatever you gained from it is what you are walking with into this next phase. Um, you should take all of that into consideration, Aries, because everything that you got from January on, and I know that our focus was really from March until, but from January on, because some of this energy was coming through even before 2020 came in, and so um, I just want you to be aware of that and think about the whole year and what led up to and including what happened during the um, global health crisis that we all experienced and know that you're going to be walking that energy forward into the new year. Um, and that's a good thing, you know. We all are learning from our experiences, and this has been an experience for all of us. And so um, now we get a chance to see where that experience is going to take us. So I'm going to get right into your reading. I am going to be reading from the I Ching. I felt like the I Ching is a good way to start the year off. And then what I'm going to do is look at the year ahead month by month. So you'll get an idea or a sense of what 2021 is going to look like for you in general. Okay, so I'm going to grab my glasses and then we're going to get the cards and then we'll be right back at you. All right, Aries. So we're going to start off with the I Ching, as I said. And the I Ching I like to go to because it gives such a good um, overall message. So when we're looking at overall messages, and that's what I'm looking at for the year 2020, we want to just look at a theme or a focus for the year for Aries. Theme and focus for the year. So with the Holiska cards, um, I do um, the coin method and I also do the arrow method, but for sake of time, I'm using Holiska's cards. And with this deck, you choose one, you choose two cards, one representing the main theme or focus or the general theme of focus, and then the second card represents the changing line. So. That'll be where the detail comes in. All right, there we have it. All right, so you are looking at passage number 63. For those of you who are numerologically inclined, you'll know what to do with that information. It says, after fulfillment is this card. The genesis of the cosmos precedes chaos. And so too does a new order follow every state of confusion in people's lives. When this new order is achieved, we like to sit back and relax, but beware. This is precisely the point where you need to be careful and observant for the achievement has not yet stabilized itself. Now, I'm sure everybody has had that experience where you think you have something in the bag and you think you've got it all sorted out. And then all of a sudden you realize that nothing could be further from the truth. Furthermore, the law dictates that decline begins after every peak. Smug satisfaction only accelerates the process. Beware of the illusion that some ideal condition can be everlasting. Nothing is constant except for change itself. Remain alert, open to new challenges, and be certain of one thing. Your road will take many a turn, lead you over numerous mountains and valleys. So it's this ebb and flow here. After there is fulfillment, after you've reached a peak, then comes the valley. And this passage to me reminds you, reminds all of us, that this is the ebb and flow of life. So it's not like, so if, if ideally in balance, you would treat the pinnacle no different than you treat the 
the valley. You would respond no differently to the pinnacle of where you are than you would to a valley or a struggle or a challenge because it's all a part of the ebb and flow in life. So after you're fulfilled, after you have received um, what you were looking for, then it's not the time to sit back and chill. It's time to remember that this is the moment when you need to be observant because sometimes when things are riding high and you're all excited, you miss some very important details. All right, so the changing lines here are changing lines number one and number four and number five and number six. So one, four, five, and six. So I will be reading those lines and you just get in wherever you fit in. Some of these lines may resonate, some don't, but whichever one resonates, take that one with you. Line one says, everyone rushes ahead looking for improvement at all cost after a change. But the blues strike once the nitty gritty work and detail begins. Resist gold rush fever. What you consolidate should ultimately endure. Consolidate, consolidate. Okay, that means that you're not spreading your wealth too thin. You're consolidating. You're bringing things in. You're narrowing things down for yourself. Um, I feel like for some of you, you may have come into um, prosperity in some way. You've, um, you have experienced something that you recognize as prosperity. For some of you, something that you've been wanting is starting to show up for you. But again, this is not the time to sit back and relax. It's time to um, pay attention to the details and don't get all excited just because everything looks so wonderful right now. Okay. Don't lose your mind. That's what we're saying. Don't lose your mind. All right. Let's go to number four here. Number four says the subliminal rumbles <clears throat> are present even if everything seems to be in wonderful order. The first signs of decay are making themselves known. Take precautions instead of closing your eyes and surrender to your dreams. So that's what they're saying when they say the decay. The decay is the, the descent after the ascent. It's happening, so you're preparing for it. And if you're preparing for it, then it's not that big of a deal. Line five, a pretty gloss may well conceal the emptiness of your heart of a heart, but it can never dispel such emptiness. You will find true happiness only if you cultivate your own inner values. Flowers of great beauty are the first to fade. And then line six, as soon as you have completed something, you stand still to admire your own work. Don't you notice how your attention wanes? This is how you unwittingly put at risk the fruit of your labor. Okay? So good information here. Good information um, I think that coming into the new year, having your wits about you is not a bad thing. Um, there was another reading. I want to think it's um, Aquarius had a similar reading in their I Ching where it's not the most positive light for the 2021 coming into 2021. But as I said to Aquarius, and I'll say this to you as well. Sometimes when the news isn't like so exciting and promising, it's warnings and things like that. That's probably a good way to head into the into the new year because you're coming in knowing and realizing that you're not expecting great, magnificent, you know, oh, it's going to be so much better. I think a lot of people are feeling that way because 2020 was so difficult. Oh, 2021, it's got to be great. But I think that what this message is, is that um, it's, it's, it's bringing you together with the sobering truth of reality. And the sobering truth of reality is that things come and go, things ebb and flow, and nothing about that and about life in that respect has changed. And so there is some security in that. As I said, the one thing that's sure to... Um, that is guaranteed is change. The one thing that is guaranteed is change. And so knowing that change can happen 
this half the battle. It keeps you out of denial. It keeps you from being in a in a in the fog of denial. And right now is not a good time to be in the fog of denial. It is not. All right. So let's look at the year ahead. I'm using the Sun and Moon Tarot for this. We're starting out in January, first of the year, time of earth renewal. We have a 10 of Pentacles here, which tells me that, again, as this said, fulfillment. This is where fulfillment happens. 10 of Pentacles is the essence of fulfillment. Other than the Empress, it's the essence of fulfillment. It's, it's you um, embracing uh, um, a foundation of sorts that you have built upon and seeing it grow and watching it grow and feeling positive about it. There's lessons to be learned about this and one of the lessons is the lessons are the lessons that were brought forward in the I Ching. So we have the Hermit here in reverse coming in in February. This is during the rest and cleansing moon. So it may be a good idea, um, even though it's coming in in reverse. It is rest and cleansing time at that time, but it may be that, you know, you are starting to come out of a Hermit phase or you are in some ways um, realizing that that may that time may be over or that time may be um past that time may be past or you may be contemplating some of the lessons that you learned while you were in a hermit mode or in a quiet time or in a alone space and when the big winds come This is the big winds moon time. This is in March when the winds come. It's time to make a decision. There will be a time for you to make a decision at that time. That's when you need to pull your faculties together. You need to use your wits, have your wits about you. The decisions that you are making are self-disciplining in nature. It's there to discipline yourself, help you to discipline yourself. And then as you come in in April, we have some changes coming for you. So the winds of change are imminent. They're not coming in with the winds, but they're coming in after the winds. So the wind's going to come through. And after the winds come through and you make this decision, and when I say winds, I mean winds of change. When they come through, then you're going to make a decision. And then once you make the decision, then the change is actually going to happen, but the change is not going to happen until April. You'll just be preparing for it until then. Now in May, at the time when the frogs return, we've got the Prince of Wands coming in in reverse. Sorry about that. I know this light isn't that great at this time of night, but doing the best I can. All right, so the Frog's Return Moon, that's in May. You have a Prince of Wands in reverse, so um, I feel like there's going to be some lessons learned around um, how you plan to lead, how you plan to um, organize your next steps. You are still building dreams during this time. You're still building on something. You're learning to cooperate with others, but I think that this is the time when you are going to stand down a bit and maybe leave that to somebody else. And then in June, um, again, I'm seeing this, uh, this is the Eight of Cups. Eight of Cups is usually a time when you're going in and doing some self-reflecting, just like in this Hermit card in February. So I see that same kind of energy happening in June. Um, I don't know if it's that you are resisting it that during that time. I'm not understanding why it's coming in in reverse. Let me see if I put it up right. It's going to make sense. Yeah, I think these are times to take the time out. So in February, you'll need to take some time out because that's about balancing yourself, balancing relationships, being able to set boundaries for yourself, and then also... Um, in June, you'll be doing that again, not to a greater degree, more or, or less to a lesser degree. 
Um, in other words, you might not have to spend as much time alone as you had in the previous month, but that's because you did your homework in February. If you did your homework in February, then when this June time comes for you to do self-reflection again, it won't be as intense. Then in June into July is when you are in the strong sun moon. That's a very, very much a Leo time. That's Leo's time and season, actually. Um, and... You have the emperor here, which is a very Leo thing. Again, we're talking about leadership. We're talking about leadership here. So there's a there's a message or there's an overall theme of leadership coming in in May. And then again in June into July, it's coming up again for you. And again, just like I was saying with this hermit, like if you do this homework in February that you need to do, then in June there will be another period for you to kind of go in, but it won't be as intense. In the same vein, it's like in May, if you um, focus on what, what growth patterns you need to be involved in as far as your leadership is concerned and learning how to cooperate. You're going to be learning some lessons about leadership in May. And then that's in preparation for what's going to happen in June into July, because I think you're going to be called into that role around that time. And again, leadership doesn't necessarily mean you're in charge of everything. It doesn't mean you're the boss. It doesn't mean you're the manager. It just means that your leadership is needed. Um, and that can happen anywhere. Doesn't matter where. What's going on during this right berries moon? Thank you. All right, so some creativity happening during the right berries moon. The right berries moon is from July to August. So this is when you're really putting your head together. You're putting your mind on something. You're focusing on something of a creative nature. I'm seeing that here. So all your focus is there. All your mental... It, energy and agility is going toward that and then by the time of the harvest moon in September there are some there's evidence of um, growth there's evidence of your own growth um, you are able to um, I'm gonna say reap the benefits of what you have sown and even though you might not be where you want to be, you're in this place that isn't as, remember we said, okay, after fulfillment, you have this kind of dip. Well, to me, this is the dip. But when you get to that dip in the fall, you really are in a position to see what, um, what a value you were able to retain or maintain. So this is not a real loss here. I'm not seeing any kind of real, this isn't any real loss is what I'm saying. It's not any real loss. Because what happens is, okay, in your downturn, because of the fact that you've been doing this like internal work and um, seeing yourself differently and having some internal moments of clarity, then when it comes time for you to have to experience the valley, you can actually benefit, you can actually see the benefits of all of it. That's not a bad thing, because a lot of times everything is about perception anyway. So if you have a perception that something is terrible, then it's terrible, but in this case, it's not that terrible. All right, so we're coming into September, October with a sense of completion, and this was done with someone else, a partnership of some sort. This goes along with your leadership skills that were in May, that were coming up in May. Um, there's somebody that you're going to connect with in May that's going to do this work with you. And both of you are going to see the effort of your work together sometime around that time. Now, when I'm referring to people talking about the work that you have to do, I'm talking about your spiritual work. So your spiritual, your spiritual work can take on many forms. It can be the form of actually work, like work that you do, like physically work. But it it can also be relationship work. It could be um, it's anything that your spirit has to get done. You know what I mean? Spirit work. All right. So in the freeze up moon, when things start getting cold again, we've got Ace of Pentacles coming in. That means that you're manifesting some things in a very powerful way, in a very spiritual way. You're able to see some of the growth. Um, again, and you're also going to see how that manifests outside of yourself in um, 
like it's going to multiply, multiply, multiply. You'll get a chance to see that. And this is a time for self-discovery. This is a, t a time for you to um, recognize yourself, to get in touch with your own identity. And especially now um, that things have changed and that there have been some other kinds of experiences that you've had. So I also see this as a time of reflection as well. And then in December, uh, November, December, then I see you making some prayers and putting some energy out into the universe. I think that's probably going to be for 2022. It's some things or some prayers or some ideas that you want to set forth for the year leaving out of 2021 going into 2022 that you're going to put out there. So this will be your goal setting time when it comes to December. You have to call us back and let us help you do that um, goal setting. So it uh, looks like a good year. It's, it's, a, it's a balanced year. It's a balanced year, Aries. Um, and I say that it's balanced because you do have that sense of highs and lows. But also the lows are not really that low. It's just that it's lower than what it was before. But you're still getting some very good lessons and some very um, um of some very good opportunities to prepare yourself for that. And I think that preparation is the key because there's always going to be that. Like there's always going to be the ups and downs in life. It's how you deal with it. It's how you manage it that's important. And so um, in looking at this from an intuitive perspective, I see you managing it. I see how the universe is preparing you for what you have to do next. It's preparing you for 2022 all the way through 2021 with these hermit experiences in February and then also in June here. It's preparing you for leadership here in May and then reminding you or showing you how you can apply that when it comes to July. So I just see all throughout the year like this ebb and flow, this ebb and flow, but each time it's like you have this one month and things are changing and you're making decisions and then you step into this leadership and then you have to take a pause for a minute and then you have to examine the your own style of leadership, your own way of leadership, and then you just kind of pour yourself into that um, for a little while. And then after you pour yourself into it, um, you're going to hit this... You're going to hit this lull, but the lull is not something that's even really that terrible. It's no towers. It's no deaths. It's no, none of those cards are showing up for you. It just seems like the lowest point is actually a nine of pentacles, which is just you reaping the harvest, you understanding the harvest, you knowing, um, that the time and the effort and the energy that you put in is not without um, its own challenges, but that the challenges end up being some of the greatest lessons that you've had. All right, Aries, this has been your reading for January 2021. If you need to take a deeper dive, you know where to find me. I'm at wooingnature.life. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook for daily doses of a little bit of wooing nature and as always i hope you have a great day i hope you have a great january and i hope you're having a wonderful life